Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, this is a marine pump that I grabbed from a estate sale oh, about two years ago or so. And since then, it has been stuffed up in the attic and I have not done anything with it. And I really haven't looked at it all that much neither. So I think it would go drag it down. We'll see what kind of condition it's in, see if we can get it to run, see if we can figure out uh, if it doesn't run, what it failed for. I just have no history on it. I don't know if we have a date on it anywhere. My guess it's like when in a boat started taking on water, they probably put this on the boat and would have it pump the water down. And if I had to guess for a year or two, I'd probably say 30s. We'll find out probably a little bit later when you guys be answering. Is red Coast Guard? Any paintings red? You would think if that was the case, it would have some kind of tag on it saying Coast Guard. Anyway, let's get into it. We'll try to figure out uh, what condition it's in to assess that part of it. I do see some, looks like overheating on the cylinder head here. And I'm guessing water pump, it looks like these copper lines that go into it, it probably runs around some kind of cooling for the cylinder and then runs back out again. And I do think there is some kind of brass tag down here that might tell us something. So let's go get some uh, you know, kerosene and a brush. We'll scuff this up a little bit, see if there's anything written down there, get us maybe a little bit better education. Let's see what we get. May not say anything. Hopefully that's not paper. <laughs> Just dissolved it. That's brass. Fortunately, it looks like a lot of the writing is gone. It looks like it might've just been printed on it. I see something right here. My guess it would probably be operating instructions. I guess we're just gonna have to go and wing it. See what's happening over here. This came from the same source for my old time viewers. We had a uh, marine engine, would have been the actual engine for the boat that powered it, either a sailboat or some kind of little skiff or something. They had a tag on it that said, lovingly restored <laughs> for a museum. I'll show you, it's right behind us. It is uh, that one right there, if anyone remembers that one. I think that one's like, 1929 I think we found the year for it anyway it looks pretty on the outside when we got into it the cylinder was really corroded it was missing a ring and a bunch of other stuff it was very hard to make compression we got it to run but it never ran well hopefully we have a little bit better luck with this one but uh <laughs> anything goes right especially once you know the the history of one piece that you got that's supposed to be known good that this could be anything carb looks like it's loose i'm not sure what we have for different controls on it you know, it's figured it's fixed so you probably just kind of set the throttle to whatever load that the pump is on it and let it run i don't know if anything is supposed to be there or not or that's just open to draw air in we have something here what do you think that is what would that let in or let out? Where's the exhaust? The exhaust probably blows maybe down at the bottom. And I think we have a plug under there. And maybe a magneto under here. Let's go get this off and we'll start getting some of the covers off and take a better look at what's the internals. It looks like something maybe I wrote instructions on a piece of paper here too that's long since worn off. Ain't that funky. All right, what are we missing? Battery? What would go there? It's got magnetos down here. I don't know what that would be. My guess is a battery. Huh, I wonder if we're gonna need that for spark. That would suck. Let's see what we got for. You got a plug under here where we got valves or we got both. <laughs> Do 
few spark plugs. They don't look all cruddy. That's a good sign. I still don't even know if this is a two stroke or a four stroke or it might be a flathead valves on it. Let's go pop those plugs out. I think it's a two cylinder. It might even be a two cylinder, huh? I was kind of thinking like old motorcycle runs two plugs. But now that we can kind of see the, the sides here, it actually looks like it's maybe a twin cylinder. That one's already loose. Let's go give her a little spin. Sounds a little clunky. Let's go grab a light. We're going to go shine down inside there and take a peek. Well, that's just weird looking. That's like a big valve. So uh, can we set the light on there and give her a little It's like a piston but it's coming way up out of the seat. That's weird. I know what it is, the piston is down lower. You see it? The piston is lower on the side. And that's like a domed so it's probably gonna be a two-stroke, yeah. It's got no uh no valves in it. Hmm. Well at least it turns over smooth. The board does not look terrible. I don't see anything down the side there that's standing out at us. We got some we got a mouse nest in there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go pop the side of that off and take a look at from that direction. We'll get this out of here. I'm, I'm guessing exhaust would come out of there and our intake is our carb. So the intake is coming into the bottom of the crankcase, puffs around and goes to the top and I guess guessing the exhaust on that. Let's go find out. Looking real quick, we got these four, but I also have two damn blacks. Actually, that one's like it's missing the nut. Let's go get that one out of there. And then those four. Actually, I'm going to take this all as one piece. It looks like the, probably the better way to get it off. It's got a copper cooling line on it. Let's get that out. There's our critter nest. Yeah, it's just water jacket going around. It's gonna be some tiny cylinders, huh? Yeah, it's just got some water jackets. And see, so the pistons are probably about half dollar size, maybe each. All right, it's cool. Oh, actually, we can see the side of the pistons. Good. Give ourselves a little bit of illumination. Break on the ring. Hopefully that's not a broken ring. That's just a break on the ring. Let's, uh, yeah, see, it's just the exhaust where it puffs out the side, huh? Could you uh, set up and stand a little bit? We'll turn that over, take a quick peek. I say yeah, it's probably around the same genre as that other engine. Hopefully that's not a break in the ring, that's just the end of the gap right there.
What do you say we throw some oil in there? And uh, maybe we'll give her a spin just for chance, see if possibly we have spark. Probably well, what we should do is also disconnect the uh, coupler for the water pump just so we're not spinning that while it's dry. So how would that exhaust work? Why would you have exhaust come out? What's the purpose of this? And then also have it where it goes down to the bottom of the, the bottom of it. Hmm. Okay, we'll just take a quick peek. Yeah. Go flip it. Let's go flip it on its belly real quick before we start checking for spark. I would think part of the bottom would be like a fuel tank too, wouldn't you? Kind of like those old washing machine motors I don't think so though it just looks like all this is that cavity and the exhaust goes in there all this is just a cavity for exhaust and what it dribbled out there maybe it has another hose maybe if it's permanent mounted you run it like that I'm not sure you ain't no gas tank either huh yeah you just go take that pump right off it's only got four bolts and another cooling line going to it and we'll let it survive. <laughs> that is five A's. It's like I had some kind of information tag on it at one point. It's got a piece of wire hanging on it. Hey, the bolt's out of it. Let's see if it'll just slide back for us. Yeah. Don't even have to hit it with a hammer. Just threaten it. It's got shims under it. Mark where those are. All right, remember the lefts are on the lefts. Right on the right. That's going to be for alignment for that puck. But these have some adjustment in, in them. Let's get rid of that. And I want to get some oil on the top end and on the bottom end. So let's see if we can get uh, probably some two-stroke oil will be our best. We do that. We get carbs just sitting on there or. There's a fuel line. Where's that fuel line going? Over to right here. Let's see. Can we take that? I want to get into the, the bottom side of it to shoot a little bit of oil in it. Thank you like a penetrating oil or something, just so the, you know, the crank has some kind of moisture down in there. There we go. Let's see if that line will come out. I don't know. Okay. And that was like that. I'll put that to the side. We'll look at that later. Not much to it, huh? huh. Wonder one way is like a choke and one way is a throttle. Let's see. Let's go see what's in the hole. Big old shiny metal. That's good. At least it's not rusty. Let's go throw a little bit of spray of something in there. It's gonna wet things a little. Oh, watch your foot. I just kicked you. You had it coming. And we're the somewhere I got two stroke. It's just straight two stroke oil. Go put a little bit in each one of those. Let that kind of go around the rings. And we'll just kind of let it we'll roll it over. Hmm. 
I'm going to try getting us a socket set up. We'll spin it. Put those plugs back on there. I'm going to see if we can get any spark out of those. I have a feeling that kind of needs some battery, whatever that thing was on the other side is my guess. But before we start digging into that, of course, let's go check. It'd be funny if we do that, it's not needed. So the rope would lock in like that, so we've got to go clockwise. Let's go to slow speed. But she sounds kind of cool of being a two uh, two cylinder. I honestly did not expect that. Let's uh. We'll get some plugs on her. Hey, right, well, I don't think we're gonna get anything without a power supply, but let's just give her a shot. Oh, no way! I did not expect that. Awesome! <laughs> All right, you know what that means, right? Well, I think I'm just gonna throw the plugs in it real quick, just to feel what it has for compression. And I wonder what the, that copper setup is for on the other side. I wonder maybe spare spark plugs you set in there. Being a two-stroke, that maybe would foul out. Let's go just throw some plugs in there. And we'll see how it feels compression-wise. <laughs> feels pretty good. I'm liking this one better than the, that green one. Let's go see if the plugs sit in now. They don't fit in that hole. But I don't know what would have went in there. But we're not going to worry about that right now. Let's go get some gas. We'll dribble a little bit in each cylinder. And we'll see if she'll cough over for us a little for you a little for you I really didn't think I was gonna have spark and I think we got a timing adjustment on our right hand side there that tab sitting over the top of the magneto it might be that or it might just be a ground see if it does anything yeah yeah we can advance and retard it let's leave it straight up and down See if it breaks my arm. <laughs> and let's go with that. Yeah, man. Back you up a little bit. In case fire shoots out of the cylinders, you want to catch it, right? Let's see what we got. <laughs> Spun the nut off. it up the flywheel good I'm happy for that huh Let's suck that down actually pop the flywheel off and take a quick peek inside let's see what it's got for goodies being marine stuff generally that stuff is built much better than regular because it's meant to handle some harsher conditions Dual set of points, a couple of big coils. Let's go bring that to the edge. Huh. All that stuff's pretty good too. You don't even have to clean those. And what does it, how do you kill it? Is there a, like, Kill spark. You think you just knock the timing or maybe shut the fuel off? How much movement does it have? You know, all this is probably written on here at one time and it's just gone, it doesn't say it anymore. Nice, right, so let me go pop that all back together. We'll go take a peek at that carb, see what we can do as far as that's concerned. Actually, I think we're gonna do it. I think a few minutes. I'm gonna go clean a bunch of stuff up. I want to see if I can find a date anywhere on it. Maybe somewhere in all this stuff, there's something going on or something we can at least look up. I'm gonna go take that time to go give her a bath, and I'll bring you right back. Well, that's a little better. I found like somebody scribed into it here. Plantation 21. Got a couple of uh, patent numbers. 
I still don't see any dates on it anywhere. And a number here. Got a copyright on the on the flywheel. The Pacific Pumper. And I do think it was military. Military, it was uh, probably Coast Guard or uh, because generally they label them and it looks like something was, you know, scratched out from what was there before. Something was written there that got removed, like maybe a property identification number or something and either somebody swiped it or it got sold and removed. It just doesn't look normal, does it? Again, the red color too, I think that has something to do with it. Not quite sure. Yeah, it looks like the original color was brown and red was painted over it. Could be just a primer or possibly even like a, a glue between the two of them. I see it there, I see it there. So I got that first number looked up and it is coming out to May 18th, 1926. What's the date on that one? I'm not quite sure what it is for. Is it this, just that casing on the button? I'm sure there's a way to go. Uh, look more information up on other than the date. But that kind of gets us in the, the realm of what it is. And I think these are uh, just later on. I, so whatever that last one is, that, that 204 is probably going to be a later date. And it should be the, get as closest to the window what the, the year of the machine is. And the bottom one is June 23rd, 1936. So we'll probably date it around that time. Late 30s, we'll call it. So apparently there's one for sale on eBay for 500 bucks. But I'm still trying to find pictures, possibly figuring out what is supposed to be in there. I'm kind of wondering, maybe you would have the, the pull start rope of some sort was stored there. Just seems like something would have easy access to it, right? I don't know about trying to go do that when it's running and vibrating around to try to go put it back in its place, but that's the only thing I can think of at the moment. And it's missing the fuel tank. I guess everybody's missing the fuel tank. A little square tank, it wasn't very big, but uh, I'm gonna keep hunting, see if I can find any more information on it. Ha! Power of the internet. Yep, there's a pull start handle with a rope going around it and it just kind of popped into place right inside there. Who the thunk? Let's go take a peek in that carb real quick. It's actually not a carb, what they call me a uh, mixer, I think. Should be our float ball. Right, remember that fuel line was pointing roughly at that screw, to the left of the screw. something does that come out now no yeah, I think that would be either an air fuel mix or a fuel Probably should have counted how far out that was, right? <laughs> Too late now. Oh. oh, holds that float in there. Kind of would. I want to see the bottom of that, you know? I guess as long as it chokes off the supply coming in, which was what, this right here, right? And that's got, it's like a screen on the bottom of it. Let's give her a little, it's clear. So the fuel would come in, float would lift up and shut off the fuel, I would guess. Let's see if that's the case. Yeah, so it pushes the fuel up, lifts the float, shuts the fuel off. And I would guess that it's going to trickle a certain amount through 
what we adjust here. And then this, I just got a detent in the middle and it flips over the other way. It's got some writing on it. It's got a, like a zero. I think that says LL and slow. It's gonna, it looks like an S. F, that's what that is. And the bottom one is C, choke maybe. Slow, maybe full throttle, and that's choke. It's just a guess on my part. Keep digging. You want to see if we get that off of there without doing any damage? As long as it doesn't have any gaskets that we're going to kill. I think our screwdriver is a little too large. <laughs> my tool's too big. I hate when that happens. Nothing bragging or anything. Yeah, let's try this one. Yeah, they call them, was it a mixer and something else? They don't know the name for uh, prehistoric curbs. Sometimes the best way to understand something is to take it apart. What do we get? Oh, something just fell somewhere. I heard it. It's got a copper. Is that like a thrust washer on the back side of it? Yeah. So I think that's probably what it is. I think it's probably a choke. And then. So slow, blocks a lot of it off. Full, I'm guessing, S and F. And then C, it looks like a C, right? You agree with me? C, F and S. And it looks like we got one more jet going up in that way. Is that got a screw hole to take that out with? Eat some light. Let's see. It does not. All right, so we'll leave that alone. It looks pretty clean too. I don't think it's much of an issue with it. I don't think they had a ethanol fuel back there, back then. I think we just kind of put it back together. <laughs> too bad I didn't count how many turns out that was, right? I guess we're going to have to poke and hope. So. I guess we line that up to the jet. Get past it. Not even really anything to clean. I might throw a little bit of carb clean. Eh, I'm going to leave it alone just in case. It's something that does not like uh, chemicals other than gas. I'm just going to blow it out some compressed air. I see a little bit of debris probably from taking the cover off. But it doesn't look bad. I will wash some stuff through here though. We can, we can clean that out. Do I have anything here? No, I don't. <laughs> Pretty simple. So it blows a cloud of dust out. Definitely put away halfway decent. said roughly you know, somewhere in that vicinity right probably adjust it later make sure that that doesn't leak it does not good I did a little bit more searching and I found it is used on fire truck, fire apparatus or fire suppression. Here's the actual pump. I guess it went on a, a, 
a one and a half ton truck. There's another picture of it somewhere. There it is. With all the gear, there's all the gear. What does it say on the door? I oh, can't read it. it. Just an article explaining all the stuff on the truck, how it's packed. There's the pump right there. And a four or 500 gallon water tank was on top of it. Well, here's that truck, you think? Late 30s? <laughs> They're trying to come up with something that we can hook in the drill. And so when the engine starts up, it doesn't want to go spin the nut back off. So I have this palm ratchet. And it looks like it has a one of those uh, Torx bits type sockets that go in. And then quarter inch drive on the other end. Go into an adapter. I don't know if this is going to be tough enough to hold up. If it's going to be able to take the load or not. Well, let's give that a shot for trying to spin it over. We use rope too, but my arm's sore. <laughs> We can find a bit for that that'll fit in there and then we put it in the chuck of the drill and see how it works. Right. Let's see if it can fight through the compression. Oh yeah. We need to put the drill on drill. That should do it. Might want to clamp it down though, huh? They have little specialty clamps. They just got studs welded to the bottom of them that can kind of go in the locating holes and not slip off the end of it and give it a better bite. We'll go for one there and one there. So that's going to be our setup. We got a ladder with a piece of fuel line on it. We're just going to fill that up with fuel. As you run into the car, it's a try about 25 or 30 to one mix. Uh, usually, I think these things ran at like 16 to one using motor oil. I got two stroke oil in there now, so we'll see how that works for it. I'm going to run it without the muffler, I guess you want to call it, chamber off of it. And we're not running any coolant in it anyway. For, uh, it, it shouldn't be a problem for a short period of time. See what we get. Drink up, my little friend. Good for you. Oops. A little over, a little over excited there. I think I need that push the little float thing. I tickled the uh, float on the carb on the mixer. Let it draw some in. I'll leave it right there. Let's try it like that. It's going to be just a guess where things go. So let's go for. Let's go for the S. I think it should probably be on a, now let's go on the choke. Timing, I'm going to leave the timing straight up and down. That's the window it has to work. But let's go see what we get. We are dripping fuel. Let's see if it'll pump some through. Ah, I missed it. <laughs> I didn't use all that fuel up, did it? It's not a very big supply. The size of a line is really thin. Let's see if we get. Yeah, it's still kind of burping some. Let's try it again. It still spun that nut off. I'm surprised. Oh, it locked on me. That's why. And then, yeah. Let's, uh,. Either that or we killed it. And it should not be locked both directions. And you know what it is? It doesn't matter. Because the only thing that spins free is that. Not the, uh, the fitting on the other side. That sucks. <laughs> it's just a forward and reverse. I was hoping that it was going to spin free for us. Let's lock both directions. Yeah. Oh well, maybe that's why it died. It might have knocked the uh, mag off. Let's be quick on the draw. Yeah. Let's go. We took it off a choke. Let's put it back on choke.
Well, that was a tad loud, huh? <laughs> I didn't want to go screw with it. I guess we're killing spark. It's supposed to be a metal tab that comes off of here. It touches across these screws. That went screaming though. I didn't want to get my hand in there. I think it's supposed to run at 4,500 RPM is what I saw. Uh, I think we need a pump on the other end of it to cause drag on it also. And then when you have that, you could probably just dial some stuff in. But yeah, as soon as I went off of, uh, so that was what, full speed? Or maybe we should have flipped it up to slow. <laughs> you know. Yeah, she runs clean. I filled up the fuel line again. Let's give her a little tickle. There's probably like a prime for it. Let's see what we get. You know, that nut loosens up. That does not help to sit up at, at all. Let's go. Let's just leave it on slow. See if it'll fire on slow. If not, we might have to choke it. We'll put that timing right at, I'm guessing that's zero. Yeah, we got nothing. Let's go for choke. We didn't screw up anything in the mag. And we're dripping fuel out. It's going slow. Sounds about right right there, huh? Let's give her a little bit more gas. Try to get it to putt. Might be flooded. I think she's flooded. Let's pop them out and we'll get them. Gonna clear my uh, looking kind of. So I did throw a bunch of oil in that bottom end too. And then the plug holes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one cylinder is wet, one's not. And it's probably the one that was firing, the one that's wet is foul. Let's go clean them out, blow that out, and we'll try to give it another shot. That would give them a little spin, see if they still got spark on both of them. Oh yeah. Okay, good. Well guys, I've had the fun that I wanted to go play with this evening. It's getting late, so I'm going to go kind of wrap it up. But she does fire up and she does run. We haven't gotten into the water pump part of it yet, but that's probably an animal in itself too. This thing looks like, a, looks like it runs like a blower inside there. Like I said, a set of gears. I'm sure this should probably be serviced and gone through too. Yeah, there's some, there's some rat poison going around. Going around in it, some good green pellets. I think I saw a piece fall out earlier too. Got grease caps, they run in. Not sure what this is here, maybe just like a double set of gears. 
that run the top and the bottom. Hard to say. But that would probably be for another time as uh, it's still kind of cold weather here. We still got freezing weather, so I don't have any of the kind of apparatus down. I got a 55 gallon drum I use for outboards up in the attic that I have to take down, put water inside that. And I don't have anything for hose connections or hoses or anything to be able to do that part of it. So we may or may not see this again. Uh, it may be a while off and I may just, if I'm able to find some stuff, I may continue on it the next couple of days, but that's just a guess right now. So for now, I've had enough fun with it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did. <laughs> Got a little bit of education on what this thing is. As I said, it's been sitting up there for a few years. So I always want to take it down and just get an idea of what I had and whether it was a runnable condition or not. <laughs> so with that, guys, I'm going to go sign off. I want to thank you all for hanging out with me. Have a little bit of fun, and we'll do it again sometime. Till the next one, I'll see you. Bye. What, you think I was going to try and rope start it? Exactly, good throttle control though, is there? There's a thumb there. Oh, is it right there under the tarp? No, yeah. oh, it's bigger than I remember. I think I helped you cover it. No, you looked at it. Ah. Dude, the whole thing on your end, I can do the same stuff. It's a funky looking machine. That's cool. There's water in the car. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> it had the motor running, but... Uh, oh, it's got a little Briggs or something running. on it. Yeah. So it probably needs new points. <laughs> probably a few other things. Would you rope start it or does it have electric start? No, it's a rope start. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a, a model team we ran? Yeah. I don't know. 34, whatever. It's a beast of a rear. Yeah, it is. The whole thing. Pull it out more?